Hello, America. Hey, girl. I'm Jimmy Fallon, and this is Fox News Saturday Night. Now, before we begin, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Father's Day, especially the bad dads, because without you, we wouldn't have half the things in my search history. Of course, there's no greater honor or responsibility than being a dad. And I'll never forget how both those feelings just completely overwhelmed me the second Maury Povich said I was the father. Even as the other six men on the stage high five, did the moonwalk, and called my wife a harlot. I'm just kidding. None of them did the moonwalk, but stay focused. For those of you who don't know, I have one son named Lincoln. But even that name's become a little controversial in the past few years because a San Francisco school district wanted to remove Abraham Lincoln's name from one of its high schools. Thankfully, it didn't happen, but from now on, just to be safe, whenever we're in California, my son goes by his middle name, OJ. Yeah, San Francisco kept Abe Lincoln's name, but it just lost its biggest shopping mall, thanks to the high crime and high taxes that are crushing retail stores in the state. It's obviously a disaster from a financial standpoint, but even on an emotional level, losing the mall's a big blow to Californians like Diane Feinstein, who will no longer be able to shop at her favorite store, Forever 91. Liberal policies have flooded the streets of San Francisco with drugs and homeless men. Although Democrats don't want you to call them homeless men, the new term is free-range people, or unhoused heroin enthusiasts. Regardless, the state of California has gotten so bad, it's been taken over by lizard people. The state has not made progress in the last two decades as it relates to homelessness. I've been here four years. I can't make up for the fact in 2005 we had an historic number of homeless under a Republican administration. Right now there's a That's Governor Gavin Newsom, who wants you to know he can't get rid of the homeless in four years, although he has managed to get rid of all the businesses in the last two, not to mention that he's gone through most of the hair gel. California's going through a lot right now. They actually got snow this year. At one point, it got so cold, Newsom issued an advisory telling Californians to go poop indoors. But what bothers me about Newsom's leadership is not the pass the buck mentality of absurdly blaming Republicans for homelessness. It's the defeatist mentality that wants you to believe it takes more than four years to stop people from going potty on the sidewalks. Folks, if America could put a man on the moon in 1969, you damn sure better believe we can put a man on the toilet in 2023. But everywhere you turn, we are abandoning the idea of American exceptionalism that won us the space race. We're replacing our never-ending quest for victorhood with the lazy, cheap thrills of victimhood. And city after city is accepting a stunning quality of life decline like the one we're seeing in my hometown in New York City. Yo, New York used to have these famous walking tours where you'd like check out the architecture. We still have them, but they're now called running tours because you're getting chased. It's bad, man. And all of this societal decline is happening because a decade and a half after Barack Obama won the presidency with a slogan of, yes, we can, the Democrats have moved on to, no, you can't, because it's a lot easier to give people pretend depression than it is to give them progress. And this whole depressing defeatist mantra, it actually works to get Democrats elected because America is being plagued by a lack of strong fathers in the home. Dads who are fierce competitors who push you to be your best at every turn. Dads who hold you accountable for your poor choices instead of teaching you to blame society. Dads who lead by the example of if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. At least he was going the right way for once. Yeah, Joe Biden got a root canal this week at the age of 82. And while he was sedated, we had a temporary president that people enjoy as much as a root canal. <laughs> and to my divine nine family. Of course, America's bigger dental concern is that when the tooth fairy comes to the Biden house, she leaves Ukrainian money under the pillow. A new report this week accused then-Vice President Biden of receiving $10 million in alleged bribes. Now, I don't know what they spent it on, but I know they weren't buying underwear for Hunter. Good Lord. More photos from Hunter's laptop hit the Internet this week? Yeah, causing America to see more packages than a retired FedEx driver. Put some clothes on, dude. But not even Hunter could win the week in nudity 
because a transgender influencer made headlines by going topless on the White House lawn during a pride celebration. Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor of trans rights and human rights. Are we topless at the White House? Now, to their credit, the Biden administration has banned the influencer from the White House and said if she does it again, she'll get sent where every cross-dressing person goes who wants to get naked in public to a kindergarten class. Yeah, we live in an America where one in three kids can't read at a grade level, but don't worry, because if the Democrats get their way, every kid will know how to tip a drag queen named Cinnabons. Yo, what is going on in this country right now? Last week, the L.A. Dodgers held their big Pride Night event where they honored the controversial anti-Catholic cross-dressing nuns, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Here's a fun fact. Former White House nuclear waste manager Sam Brinton is reportedly a member of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. So on the plus side, the Dodgers finally found a guy who can steal. But on the minus side, the Dodgers' new female pitching staff has a lot more balls than strikes. hey -o, good night, everybody! Of course, the biggest story of the week revolved around another one of America's leaders. Mm -hmm. He's ready for our triple toss-up. Proper name the category tonight. The great Pat Sajak announced that he'll be retiring from Wheel of Fortune at the end of the upcoming 41st season. You know you've been on Wheel of Fortune too long when you tell Vanna White you'd like to buy a hip. But Sajak's an icon who's going out on top, and I'm proud to have met him and call him a friend. Yeah, that's me in another fine jacket from my overweight figure skater collection. And sure, I'm a mess. And I used to be a broke New York City taxi driver. But you know what, man? I'm up here hosting a frickin' TV show because I grew up with a dad who pushed me to be better at every turn because that's what real dads do. They don't teach you to search for excuses. They teach you to find a way. Like the time my babysitter canceled, so I had to bring my kid on stage at the Gotham Comedy Club. Yeah, it's a cute pick, but I'll probably lose a custody battle over that one someday. Your Honor, his first words were Long Island iced tea. Folks, when I was a cab driver, I couldn't skip work for Lincoln's first day of preschool, so I had to drive him in my taxi. And the worst part is we were so poor I had to charge him. I didn't see myself as a victim. I saw myself as a guy who had an opportunity because he lived in America. And that's all because I relied on leadership in my house and not leadership in Washington. You see, real dads don't teach you to, you know, cop out and search for victimhood. They teach you to bust your ass and hold yourself accountable. I grew up in an America where not only did your parents smack you if you got out of line, but sometimes other people's parents smacked you too. It was actually pretty hot when your friend's moms did it. Now, to be clear, I'm not endorsing violence because if you were into violence, you'd be watching The Real Housewives right now. But what I am endorsing is the personal accountability and commitment to a greater good that actually made this country the team nobody wants to play for 200 years. Yeah, Donald Trump may have gotten indicted this week, but when he wasn't hanging out at Cuban restaurants, he was reminding anyone who would listen that our American values are under attack from every angle. I think it's a rigged deal here. We have a rigged country. We have a country that's corrupt. We have a country that's got no borders. We have a country that's got nothing but problems. We're a nation in decline. Listen, man, I don't know anything about handling classified documents, but I do know he's not the first person to do it the wrong way. But there was Hillary Clinton shamelessly fundraising off Trump's indictment like she didn't break the same laws he did. It's totally impartial potential juror. <laughs> Even Bill Clinton saw the hypocrisy on this one, which is why he decided to shut up and stick to doing what he does best, his side chicks. But whatever happens to Trump next, the presidency, the prison, or even something way worse, like another appearance on Morning Joe, Donald Trump's message of victorhood over victimhood must endure if this country has any shot of getting back on its feet. Which is why if I could give America's dads one gift this Father's Day, it would be a naked picture of Julia Roberts. It's the least we deserve after all those lousy macaroni necklaces. But if I could give America's dads two gifts, I would throw in the ability to embrace their responsibility to raise strong kids who don't fall for all the woke grievances and pretend oppressions coming from the left. Yo, nobody's under attack in this country. Nobody's being oppressed. And we'd all be so much better off if more dads stepped up and pushed the need for greatness over grievance that got this country to the moon in the first place. As a modern day Neil Armstrong would say, that would be one small step for them, one giant leap for they kind.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.